Okay, folks, we, we're doing a Monday show here with Anna. Uh, we've already done a half an hour worth of show. Uh, if you guys Hello, want to hear everyone. That, um, we, we, my mom was on for a half an hour giving recipes and lessons on life and everything else. So um, if you guys want to learn about that, go to VinnieTotteries.com or Lipson or uh, iTunes or wherever you listen, you know, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts and you can hear the whole show. Um, Anna, let's cover a few questions and then okay. we'll get out of here. I'm emailing Scott King right now. How does that make you feel? Makes me feel good. He's the original. He's the original. Yeah. He's okay. no Tim Malian, but uh, he is the original. <laughs> okay. First of all. Oh. Schmaps, a.k.a. Katie Applegate. She sent me. There's a new, did you know Peloton's coming out with a rower for 2K? Do you want to guess how janky it's going to be or you want to wait till people have to return them? Okay. $2,000 for a rowing machine. $1,800, $2,000. Okay. You're in for $1,800. You're in for two grand. You're going to get the subscription and do the thing. And I know how you feel because you love your concept too, rower. Okay. Well, let me explain something before you even tell me what this rower is. If you go over to the Thames and, um, in London. And, you know, this is where you see all those great boat houses and, you know, you, yeah. you know, the famous rowing teams in London. I mean, they're known for this. And whenever I run along the Thames, you, you can look at all those boat houses and they have rowing machines lined up. Would you care to guess what brand rowing machines are lined up in all of these boat houses for miles? Concept two. Concept two. You go to the United States, you look in boat houses. What do you see? You talk to Chris Robinson. Is that the guy remarkable? My unremarkable brain. What's his name? Uh, Dave Robinson. Dave, Dave Robinson. Chris Robinson is the guy that owns the um the, the bike shop. I'm sorry. So Dave. Yeah. Dave's a roar. Ask him what they use. Concept, Concept two. two. Okay. The the landmark roar, the you know, the the pinnacle of rowing machines is the concept two. You could get Hold on, I'm going to go look 80, at the price of the concept. You, I could tell you it is probably 800 bucks. Brand new. Brand new. It can't be 800 bucks. And I'm telling you folks, I'm a guy who worked in gyms for years. The one piece of equipment you never have to fix. And people screw up things in gyms like you couldn't oh, believe. Oh, yeah, I bet. The one piece of equipment. I mean, every now and then you would wear parts out. Like you, you, you use them enough, you're going to wear parts out. Right. But the one piece of equipment you could count on year in and year out for around eight hundred bucks is the concept two. How much is the concept two, Anna? It's gone up to nine ninety. Okay, you know what? If it went up to twelve hundred, still worth it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if it went up to eighteen hundred bucks, still worth it. Is that the model E or the model D? What are you looking at? I will say their prices have gone up because I got the concept two bike for around eight hundred bucks, and it's now up to eleven hundred bucks, and that was just a couple of years ago. But are you looking at the D or the E? Look I am D. looking at the Concept Two Row Erg. Okay, but they make three versions. Okay, well, it's part. It's. I want you to look at the Model D. It doesn't say a Model D. Oh, they they got models on it. They got the D, the E, and well, the least expensive one is the nine ninety one. Okay, still, folks, this is under a thousand bucks. Yeah. This is this is what Model you D. Use. Model D. Ro the the row note the row erg with standard legs is the new name for the model d indoor rower okay yeah that's the one i have and i'm telling you that piece of equipment is the standard anywhere you go anywhere I i'll give you let me, let me let me name drop and give you an example my buddy uh adam carroll had the model d still has it but another company went, oh, you're using a rowing machine. We'll send you this super duper, right. super duper duper rower. Right. right. I was at Gina's wedding. And Adam was like, hey, how often did your rower break? And I'm like, my concept too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, it doesn't break. Yeah, I had the gun. They had to bring me new rollers for the bottom of my, I said, for your concept too? Nah, I got this other thing. It's got all the stuff on it. Bah, 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 bah. I know which machine it is. I don't want to talk bad about the company. And it's broken on him twice. Twice. And the guy barely uses it. 
<laughs> I was going to say, and how often is he? I mean, you're like a power user. I, I hammer mine. Lauren calls my concept to bike erg. It's really more of a concept with you. That's what he yeah. says to me. He's right. You got to use it and it doesn't work unless you use it. It but works great, Vinny. I hammer away on mine. You know, we have uh, Dan Lynch. He comes on the show. That guy's got two concept twos. Don't ask me why. He hammers on his every day. He doesn't do anything yeah. else. He can't ruin these machines. Okay. He does it like <clears throat> it's his job. My sister-in-law, Kristen. Yeah. She's got um, two rowing machines. Mm -hmm. One in, um, in, in uh, Paris and one somewhere in England. And it's the ones with the big water tank on the front, you know, and you pull against the water. Yeah. Okay. You know how you change the resistance on that thing? They give you a little bilge pump. You have to stick in there and put the water and take the water out. I mean, can you imagine? It sounds like a lot of work. It, with with the concept too, you move a little lever up and down. It, it it sinks to your phone, and then this can sink too. You can put all your workouts on your computer. If I can do it, anyone can. Do it. That's true. By the way, concept two pays me how much? Zero, Zero dollars. It sounds this like an not ad. A, it sounds like an ad for concept two, and it, it is sounds not. like an ad. So I'm I just wanted to bring that up because they how Peloton's. Go ahead. What, what do you get for your two grand over? Well, I it's right now. It's actually now that I'm looking at it. It's not putting a price. So we're just making an assumption. So I stand corrected. I don't know how much it's going to be. When we find out, you can, here, I'm going to put my email in and get updates. Yeah. So when it comes out, I, I want to find out me. because, you know, the whole thing's going to be, oh, you know, because and now two does all kinds of stuff where you can yeah. do challenges and the whole thing. And you can do, I've done a few of the challenges. I did the um, marathon challenge. Yeah, I've you have. The fifty thousand those challenges. The fifty thousand K challenge. Yeah. You know, those kind of things. Just to mess around. I wanted to see how long it would take me to do fifty K. Now I'm gonna be on concept. I mean, uh I like being on Concept Two's mailing list, but now I'm gonna be on Peloton's mailing list for forever. You know, if I had room in, in my gym, I would have the Concept Two ski erg. Oh yeah, that thing was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm gonna say something. Go on. I've gotten some weird emails recently from people who think I've either stolen their email or sold their email or all this stuff that I personally wouldn't even know how to do. Right. The only time that you get emailed from me is because you signed up and opted in. At some point in your life, you signed up on my mailing list. I email people at the most, at the most three times a month. And then, of course, I have a weekly sub stack which is a free recipe I'm giving out or right. an interview or whatever. So some lady, she was really nice, but she wrote, she's like, hey, did you sell my email? With like 10 question marks. I was like, what? I don't even know what that is. No. Yeah. And she goes, well, yours is the only site I've signed up on. And now I'm getting all these things. And I was like, are you on Facebook? So do you think it's the evil conglomerate that's stealing all of our data and selling it? Or do you know. think it's me, a housefrau from California who doesn't, who basically doesn't know how to use email? Um, no, I don't. I Just so you guys know, that's scuzzy and gross. And Vinny and I would never steal emails, buy emails, sell emails like some. And then somebody today wrote, you know, stop. I don't know how you got my email. I was like, you signed up. Yeah, that's th what? I don't know who you are. How would I get your email? I don't like magically think of someone, a random email and type it in. Oh, it worked. I got her. Like, what? Yeah, I, I, I don't get that. Just so Every you know, I, yeah. we are very, we don't like that. That's gross and icky and we would never do that. So I just yeah, had every, to. Every now and then I'll get the same thing where people are like, what did you do in my email? I, like, I didn't do anything. Yeah. You know, it's very seldom. I mean, and we have a, a gazillion emails that I have. And, um, you know, for, I might hear that. Amount I might hear that three times a year. For amount that I email people, you email a tenth as much from your list. Well, yeah, you should be emailing why, more. Yeah, yes. if people get upset with me. They go, why don't you email us more? It's like, eh, I don't want to bother people. Um, but I might get around to that at some point. Uh, Anna, while anyway, I'm okay. water, ahead. ask me another question. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, oh, this is a good one that came up. I was going to do that, is it real or is it fake thing? But I'm just going to tell you, this is a real thing that came up in my Instagram feed, and it's so brilliant. 
because in fact, I'm going to copy this picture and send it to you because you're not even going to believe it. I'm copying this and I'm texting it to you. All right. It is for something called Posca, P-O-S-C-A. And it came up in my Instagram feed and it, it says eat pasta better. Okay. So first of all, I don't, I don't, I don't eat pasta, but I get that. So it says just one tablespoon of pasta in sparkling water before a meal reduces the intake of carbs in your body and curbs appetite to support weight loss. With Posca, you can enjoy your favorite foods and drinks guilt-free. And uh, there's folks, this picture of um, angel hair pasta. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Uh, Is, folks. Uh, you guys. Yeah, please. No, nobody, Nobody's falling for this, right? Oh, they'll probably make millions of dollars and then get sued and then be out of business. I don't know. Yeah. Something will happen. I just want to show. I still can't believe the amount of crap that comes up in my Instagram feed. Because it thinks like, oh, she talks about pasta sauce because I do have pasta sauces, although I don't eat pasta. And and she talks about uh, NSNG. So she must really want this ad for Pasca. Okay. It all just drives me. I didn't know if you had a comment. No, no. That, that can, I, I just hope that people are aware enough to, to realize uh, ju just, you know, how weird that is and how, you know, Orwellian yeah. is not the correct word, but you know, it's, it's just weird. And if I feel like what they're banking on is catching people in a weak moment on social media going, Oh, I do yeah. really want pasta. I miss pasta. Maybe yeah, I'll just, just buy that. And, but you know, look, I, I, I've been yelling since the 1980s. I was, I was talking about this on a consult today. Um, you know, the woman was going, but you know, diet soft drinks. Can I still have that? You know, diet, and I said, look, you know, I always say this to people. I'd rather see you start a smoking habit. And I'm not being funny. Diet soft drinks, it's a carcinogen. And I was yelling about this in the 80s uh, on my radio show. I was yelling about it to my clients in New Orleans in the 80s. Whenever kids would, I wouldn't allow it into my gym at Newman School. You could not come in with a soft drink, not even a diet soft drink. Right. You, you know, I don't care. Drink it outside. You're not coming in here with it. It's not going to happen. And People say, oh, no, it doesn't have calories. Like, no, it's not about the calories. And then, you know, recently people were like, I have a CGM machine on. It doesn't make a difference. I don't care if you have a CGM. <laughs> I don't care. Right. Show me a skinny person besides the one on the commercial drinking a soft drink. Every time I've taken people off, you know, they, I, I've let them, they've cut out everything. Whenever I'd say, okay, keep the soft drinks. And then I would pull them off of that. That's when the weight loss would start. So it's up to you, folks. You can cut everything out, but don't expect anything great to happen till you get rid of the diet soft drinks. You know, it's the same thing. And if someone thinks they're going to have some kind of frizzy drink and then go have pasta, you know, if you're going to fall for that, then good luck. I, lo I love too, like the specificity of you have to have it in sparkling water. Like that makes you think like, oh, does the do the bubbles activate it? You know what I mean? It's like, it's all trickery. Yeah, it's all crap. It's um, all so- Back to bikes for a second, because Deborah asked on Twitter, um, and I think, Deborah, we may have answered your question because we were talking about rowing machines, but also the bikes. Deborah does say, looking for a bike with streaming workout capabilities. Suggestions? I could buy a bike and then stream YouTube workouts, but would like to have challenges slash friend rides, et cetera, for motivation. I have also thought I should try some spinning classes at my YMCA to see if I like it. Uh, all fine. Yeah, you know what I say, the exercise, you you know, do the exercise you will do. That's the important one. I like I was on I was on my spinner for an hour today. And I was on my rowing machine for a half an hour after that. Um, I had a television show on that big giant screen you see behind me. Can you see it? Can you see it? No. Right well, sort of kind of it's low right now. This is the black thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Whenever it's low, that means I had it low because I was watching. A, I was on a bike. And when you use a bike, I have to look down when I'm on a rowing machine, I look up. And um, so, yeah, it's the exercise you're willing to do and the thing you can do to pass the time. For me, any kind of dumb show on that television, a documentary, you know, usually it's documentaries. I would never watch any, you know, I wouldn't sit down and watch it. Right. right? I don't have time for that. Usually right. my television watching is what 
Serena wants to watch at night, you know, right. it's our time together, right? So and we like similar things. So it's fine. Um, except for when she puts that Agatha Christie crap on. But at any rate, um, you don't well, like it, Miss Marple. <laughs> no, you don't want to watch a mystery. I can't. Um, so yeah, you know, I get to watch stupid stuff. I just put anything on. Usually it's about some rock and roll drummer or guitarist or something, you know, and I'll just watch it. Yeah. You know, and it kills the time. The time goes by so fast. Otherwise, if you're staring at a blank wall, you know, I had a friend going back to rowing. He was going to row across the Atlantic and he did it. And one of the, the things they had to do was get used to just copious amounts of boring hours. So one of the things he did was, um, he started one night at around nine o'clock, eight o'clock in the evening, got in a dark room with his rowing machine and only had a bucket next to him to pee in. And he had a, a jug of water next to him on the other side. And the goal was to see how long he could go and try to figure out how many hours, you know, just disorient himself. And if he had to pee, he would in the dark, he would grab the bucket and pee into the bucket. No sound, no nothing, just deprivation. Wow. Because when you're rowing at night, it was a two man rowing team. Sometimes you rode all you know through the night and you had to get used to that. Right. Yeah. This is not that this is occupy your mind. And if that means a class or, you know, a streaming thing or whatever, do it. Yeah. You know, do it. I, I know it sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth because I'm not a fan of Peloton. But if that's your thing, if you want to waste that kind of money, knock yourself out. Right. Right. As you said, the word Peloton. The email came through that says, Peloton, you're on the list. Oh, boy. There you go. You see how that works? Yep. Universe. Okay. Um, Bruce S., our friend Bruce Cacchio. Yeah. You know him. Yeah. Bruce S. asks, how can we best determine our goal weight? BMI seems like a fool's errand. It is. <clears throat> Back... When you know, I was, I was, I'm 5'11 now. I used to be a little over six feet tall. But back when it, let's call me six feet tall, I was playing college football and uh, I was built like a brick shit house. I weighed about 220, 225. And my waist was about the same size as it is right now. I was beefed up, right? I had not one ounce of fat anywhere in my body. It's probably the tightest I've ever been. D1 football, I looked like you would expect me to look. Yeah. 19, 20 inch neck, 19 inch bicep, you know, around the middle of my bicep. Chest was 50 some odd inches big, 55, 56. Legs were 33 inches each. I had body, my legs looked like Tom Platt. My legs just built out really big. Okay. I was considered morbidly obese. What? Not one ounce of fat on my body. If you looked at the at how, the, the scale, have... the BMI. If you look at the scale, at my height, I should have weighed one sixty five, perfect weight. Huh. Right? My BMI was probably close to thirty. So BMI 25. is just a height and weight thing. It doesn't have anything yeah. to do with the body. Nope. The, nope, the nope, body nope, fat. No. Nope. Okay. No body mass index. You know, that's the way. You know, we came up with this scale back whenever, and we've never changed it. Uh, today. Uh, Anna, you've seen me. I'm very lean, right? Yeah. Can we both agree on that? And he's still morbidly obese, you guys. I'm that 170. I'm, I'm I'm 175, maybe. So on the scale, um, I'm like a 22 on, on that body mass index scale. I'm 22, which is teetering on being too heavy at 5'11 now. So if you look at it, it doesn't matter a whole lot, Bruce Almighty. So you have to, I tell everyone, look in the mirror, look in the mirror. The mirror never lies ever period. So do people just come up with an arbitrary number? Cause I feel like a lot of people are like what I weighed in high school. And then other people are like this number, but then they get, well, what, and then some people never get to where they weighed in high school. And then other people get to it and be, you know what I mean? Look at Marie. She's she weighs I, that, less than what she did in high school. Yeah, that that's you know what, I, mean? what I was going to bring up. You know, look at my mom at 80 some odd years old, 81, 82, whatever she is. She wanted to get down to at one time 
165. That's what she right. wanted to get to. And I said, well, mom, why did you pick that? She goes, because, it, you know, when I was in my late 20s, early 30s, I was the best I can do. So how do right. I expect to get below that now when she was in the 200s? Right. right. And if you guys are in the Facebook group, she weighs like 130 now. Yeah. She was 135 when she graduated she, high she school. She said she was 140 when she got married. Yeah. And so now she's below she that. She a bit low pregnant. Who knows? Um, oh, hey, girl. She, she wasn't. She was not. You know the old, you know, the oh, old Italian, the old Italian women? Yeah. They would mark down the date when you got married. They would mark it down on the calendar and they would watch. That's right. They paid attention. It's none of their damn business. Oh, they made it their business. Oh, it's none of y'all's business. Yeah. Um, yeah. let's do one more and let's wrap it up. All right, let's do it. Steak and Iron, our friend from Twitter. Love that guy. I yeah. love him. I like him. I'm in deep like. You're in deep love. He's been on the show a couple of times. He has? Mm hmm That's great. That's the show. Yeah. He's a good guy. Steak and Iron asks. Oh, wait, before I ask this question, remember no. I said we were going to refer to earlier episodes. I want to make sure that we are plugging other episodes so you guys oh, aren't yeah, missing. Yeah, 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 Nina yeah. Teicholz was just on this past no, no, Friday No, 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 no. It turns out, no. No, just well, kidding. Wait, hang on, wait, this is in two weeks? Yeah. Yeah, Nina is coming up yeah. next week because- Unless Nina, something changed between yesterday and today, which it could have. Well, I didn't record Nina today because she got the dates wrong. I'm not recording her okay. until next week. You might have to record with me again, Anna. So uh, go back to Friday. Anna's on the show. <laughs> Unless I can, I can pull up somebody, Trocolation or somebody. Or, yeah, you need uh, help. You need help because yeah. people are going to get tired of me real fast. Yeah. Um, of Anna. Okay, but well, you know what? Do you have a, a old episode with Nina Teicholz you could refer people to? Why not? Yeah, but then it would be Nina two weeks in a row. No, I'm just... Vinny, I'm saying you're supposed to be referencing other episodes. I know, but you see, because, people, it doesn't have Anna, to. Be. I, I, I really want to do this, but we're two weeks ahead right now because of, you know, all the stuff going on. With okay. Me. What is a recent podcast episode you've done that you thought was really good that people might not have heard? Maybe you should reference that. Uh... While you think about that, I'm going to tell you something. You referred me to read James Nestor's book and I got the thing. Yeah. The Ooh, breathing maybe, apparatus. I, maybe I could play that. Yeah. Well, no, it's not about you playing something. It's about plugging recent episodes so that you get more listeners right. listening to other episodes. I, I Do you get, get it, it now. Yeah, I okay. get. I, I get it. It's just that my head is not. You know. I understand. I, I don't know when this is coming up. If James Nestor's episode is in the past fifty episodes, and so it's still free, go listen it to it. It should be. It should be. So maybe. I got his book, Breath. Yeah, great book, right? I'm an hour into listening to it already. I am panicking because the mouth breathing he's described because I have allergies and asthma and all this stuff already the mouth breathing he's describing. And he says it's particularly prominent with women and children. See? Yeah. So you know what I mean? I'm like freaking out. It's so good. You guys have to get his book. Yeah. Love James Nestor. As a matter of fact, he was just a Mike Rowe. And when I heard that, I was like, "Good for him!" Oh, yeah, I was like, "Thank you, Mike, for having that guy on." It's so oh, illuminating, and you. his and he reads his own book, which I always love. And he is, it's just, I'm, I'm sitting here having a lot of like aha moments, you know. Jim, Don't sue fan, me, Oprah, I've, I've, that I said had, aha moment. I've had three. I've had James on three times. The first time was when I was trying to figure out who Wim Hof really was. Because right. he was the guy that broke Wim, Wim Hof to the public, pretty much. Oh, yeah. And um, and he's that's when he started learning more about the breathing techniques. But James is just the man, in my opinion. So uh, it's I, I can't recommend it highly enough. Okay, yeah. so did you come up with? Well, we're gonna say James Nestor. Listen to one of his episodes. Yeah. Um, and if not, um, Lois, go pull up that episode. Put it up again. Steak and well. Steak and Iron. Steak and Iron asks. Yeah. Lots of people are defending honey. Love to hear your guys' take on it. I feel. Anna froze up. Let's see if she comes back. Huh. Well, since Anna's not on right now, defending honey. I don't know if it's a defending or well, there you are. It froze for a second. Did you yeah. Hear? Yeah. So I heard yeah. what you said. I was getting ready to go into my answer. Uh, okay. I, I don't know why we're calling it defending honey. 
honey doesn't need a defense, right? <laughs> honey, honey is not broken. Honey but is not disenfranchised. I, I've, heard, I've heard the doctors say, oh, honey, honey, honey. It's like, it's sugar, folks. I'm sorry. And by the way, um, the one thing that those doctors are saying that is correct is that some honey is not pure honey. They're actually mixing in, um, just like with olive oil, we talk about this with the Villa Capelliat, they're mixing high fructose corn syrup in with it and telling you it's 100% pure honey. The one thing those guys are right Shocker. about is that not all honey is created equal, but even if you're getting honey straight from the hive and mm -hmm. you know it's 100% pure honey, mm -hmm. your liver sees it as sugar. I'm sorry. Right. I, I, w I wish I could tell you otherwise. I wish I could. I, I, I wish I could do it because I love honey. I would eat it myself all the time, but it, it, it doesn't work. I'm sorry. You know, it's interesting that you say that about it being cut because I always kind of thought that, you know, the honey that comes in the honey bear things, and I don't like honey, so I don't buy it. But now that I'm a small batch food producer, mm -hmm. I always wondered, like when we learned about olive oil and like the really nice olive oils that are actually olive oil are so like the price disparity is right. so huge between the cheap grocery store brands and the like nice ones, yeah. single origin, blah, blah, blah. And so I always thought that about honey when you're in the, and you see the local honey, you're like, why is this thing $17? Yeah. And this And this one's two fifty nine, But that certainly that, that explains should tell you, why. That should tell you something right there. And if you're going to buy honey, go get the stuff from a local guy that you know is making it. You know, he's got his own beehives and what have yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, some beekeeper that's putting it out there. We love beekeepers, by the way. We need bees. Bees are great. We love but bees. The bottom line is the honey thing. I, you know that's going around right now. It's gone around before with the whole Paleolithic. Oh, it whole goes paleo around. With, you know, It'll help paleo. your um yeah. allergies or your get the you know. And it may. I don't know. I don't know yeah. that part of it. But if you're you right, think right. that you're taking it for medicinal reasons and you're not getting any of the sugar spike from it, think again. Right. Sorry. Uh, folks, Villa Capelli olive oil is the best olive oil on the planet. Bar That's none. True. Villa That's Capelli. True. We use it here. Anna uses it at her, at her house. And you know where yep. else they use it? They use it at Villa Capelli. Yeah. You can have it at your house. I, I have it in my vitamin D. I, I have it in my Villa sauces. Capelli. Yeah. So, folks, Villa Capelli, we're not messing around here. We're not just saying this because we get paid a lot of money for it. We're saying this because it actually is better. It's almost a salad dressing all by itself. Hey, they've got the lemon oil, the oleo santo, which is the pe the red pepper oil, and the garlic oil back in stock. I love those flavored oils. Yeah. Unfortunately, the KTM, which is the spicy one, and the rosemary are sold out. But I strongly, re especially those are great for like making different dress salad dressings, and then you have different flavor profiles. Real good. In fact, I would get a three liter tin, and I would get like the lemon oil and a garlic oil, right? And then you use the discount code Vinny, V I N N I E, not Vinny with the wimpy Y. You want Vinny, V I N N I E. You'll get 10% off your order. And then you'll still, if you get that, what I just said, you'll still have ordered enough to get the free shipping. And olive oil ain't cheap to ship. So get, get, order more so you get the free shipping. Hi, are you there? Yeah, I was here. Oh, I found it. Oh, you found a song? Yeah, I found what I want to play. This is so cool. I can't believe I found this. Oh, my God. I can't wait to hear it. Okay. Folks, Anna Pacino has got all kinds of powders and goops and sauces. You heard about it when goops <laughs> when Marie was on the phone. I'm the new uh, gooper. Yeah, you, you, are, you are the gooper. Go check out everything at eathappykitchen.com. And by the way, I had this happen again to me on um, how you say the uh, the phone calls the other day. It's like, I just wish I knew more recipes. And I said, Anna's got cookbooks. Oh, my God. And they were like, oh, yeah, I've been meaning to order that. I wanted to reach through the phone and strangle that person. But they were <laughs> paying me, so I couldn't do it. Um, and by the way, if you don't want to order the books themselves, I have them at Eat Happy Kitchen for eight ninety nine dollars for a PDF. Yeah. Just go get it. Go get the PDF, folks. Go, go, go to the Substack. Most of the recipes there are free. Go to my web. I have so much free content for recipes. You guys should not be lacking in recipes. Um, You know what to do with me. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, go to VinnyTotteries.com. Click through the banner. Bookmark it. Use it every time. It's how we keep the show free. 
Uh, we also have a super fan page, so you can go check that out. All right, now for all the cool kids, I got a special song.